Hey, what's up? This is Adam from Switchboard. And in this video, I want to attempt bravely to do a tutorial uh, of Switchboard Canvas um, and try to create a dynamic sports result image. Um, so as an example, I'm going to use or take some images, actually steal completely, steal a design from the US Open Instagram account. US Open is the big tennis tournament here in the US. Uh, it's actually on right now in New York. They post a ton of content throughout the year, but um, what I want to focus on today are these match result images that they post. Now they post these throughout the year from all different tournaments around the world. Um, you can see it has the player names and the score, the name of the tournament, the city the tournament was played in, um, the round here, this happened to be the final of this tournament. And of course, the US Open handle is in this is in this Instagram image. So this is what I'm going to try and use as a template. And then kind of show you how to use the Switchboard Canvas API to generate these images, supplying dynamic data so that you could connect this uh, to a live feed of scores using something like uh, uh, sports radar that, that provides real-time results. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to jump over to Canvas. I've created a new uh, template here. I've called this Tennis Score. It's completely blank. Uh, so I'm going to try and build a template up uh, based on or using this as a, as, uh, as a guide. Uh, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add an image. And I'm just going to find uh, an image of a tennis player here. Um, that I found earlier, and I'm going to pin this uh, to the four corners so that it uh, fills the uh, fills the template. And I'm going to rename this as play image, and I'm going to lock this so that I don't screw that up. Um, now going back to this, there is sort of a blue gradient, so um, I also have a gradient image here, blue gradient background. I'm going to put this over the top again, pin this to the corners. I'm going to call this gradient. I'm also going to lock that in place. Um, okay, so one thing I'm going to do before I carry on is the background color of uh, the template, which was white, but obviously we have an image in front of it now. I'm going to make this a sort of a dark blue. And the play image, I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit so that that sort of takes on a blue hue almost. Okay, so the image is in. Um, I'm going to save the template. The image is in. The gradient is in. Um, what I want to do now is start to put in the pieces of information that will be dynamic. Now the player image will be dynamic as well, but now we're going to start adding some of these text uh, elements. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm firstly going to add uh, actually the um, flag of the first player. Now, I've uploaded a couple of uh, flags for the US here, so I'm going to add this. I'm going to give this a size of something like uh, 100 pixels square. Set the corner radius here all the way over. That will make it round. And then I'm just going to give this image a bit of a stroke here so that uh, it's round the same as the template that we are, or the guide that we're trying to copy here. Now, with positioning this flag, what I want to do is actually pin this flag to the, the bottom left corner because if I want to resize this template, I always want the text and the match result information to be towards the bottom of the image. So we'll see how that works in a second. But um, I think what I want to do is use the, uh, the pinning controls here to pin this towards the bottom. Uh, bottom left. So the pin controls for bottom and left are set to edge with a hundred pixels offset and that puts us um, nicely uh, offset into the from the from the bottom left corner. Now what I'm going to do is add the first player. Now because we're working from the bottom up this is actually going to be let's say the player two's name so I'm just going to put in here player two uh, I'm going to make this white. I'm going to choose a font. In this case, I'm going to choose 
um, where is the one I want? Interstate compressed, something like this. And I don't want the text to fill this uh, box. I want to set the font size to, to 60 here. Horizontal alignment, I want to the left. And I'm just going to resize this. Now, back to the pinning controls for this player name. First of all, I'm going to player2 name. What I want to do is pin this text element to the flag. So again, when things move and resize with these templates, these uh, elements stay where they should be. So what I'm going to do is, for the left pinning, I'm going to say pin this to um, image 3, which actually I should have called this image 3 player 2 flag. There we go. It's OK. So left is pinned to player 2 flag. We're going to say pin this to the right hand side with an offset of say, I don't know, let's see what 50 pixels looks like. Top also I want to pin to the player 2 flag top and I'll set this to zero so that uh, they're aligned at the top and there are 50 pixels between the right hand side of the flag and the left hand side of my player name. Now I sort of want to vertically align this a little bit more so I'm going to add a little offset here to um, the top offset that will give us something like that which is a pretty good space and I'm going to reduce this um, width of this uh, this player name okay so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, duplicate this uh, element here and I'm going to make this element the player 2's first set score so I'm going to put in a number so just six and then I'm going to offset or actually pin this first set score to player to name the left edge and I'm going to give this an offset I don't know I need to see what this looks like maybe 300 okay so what I've done there this element is now pinned to the left edge of the name I shouldn't have pinned it to the right edge because the player name uh, could fluctuate and be longer but we want these scores to line up if we look at the guide um, I'm currently adding this element right here and I've said it's um, what did I say it's 300 pixels from um, the left edge of the player name so that's in place and I'm going to duplicate this one uh, I'm going to call this player to set 2 for their second set score and now I'm going to pin this um, to the player 1 set score maybe 50 or 100 pixels um, away from this element. So what we've got at this point is the flag. The player's name is uh, pinned to the flag and the player's set first set score is pinned to the name and the second set score is pinned to the first set score. And I'm going to repeat this one more time. Player 2 set 3 and the left pinning here, I'm going to set this to player two, set two. So now they are all pinned uh, together. And I've kept the names um, somewhat intuitively named so that when we uh, call this with the API, we know exactly what to, uh, uh, to use in our request to overwrite this information that we see. Okay. What I'm going to do now is create the... Uh, same elements here but for the player one so I'm going to duplicate this flag now we're on player one flag and at the minute we are uh, pinned to the bottom edge so I'm just going to increase uh, the distance maybe a little more here 275 maybe that's a bit too much 250 something like that so now this flag is pinned um, 100 pixels from the left and 250 pixels from the bottom uh, player 2, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to do player 1 name. Now, the top, I'm just going to basically switch um, all of the elements that these are pinned to uh, just so that they match what we've just done for player 2. I'm going to rename this player to player 1. Left from player 1 flag. Okay, so now this player 1 name is completely pinned to the flag. And I'm just going to do the same for 
each of these scores. So player one, set one, pin to player name, player one name, player one name. Don't necessarily want that. Any offset there. Okay, and I'll change these scores so that we can see we're dealing with different elements. Uh, pin this one. And we want to pin this. Let me just make some more space here. Player one, set two. And we want to pin this to player one, set one, offset of 100. And repeat this one last time for player one, set three, and then pin this to player one, set two. Okay. So there was a lot of pinning of elements to other elements there, but that means that everything should stay the same. If I go to the uh, if I go to the uh, sizer here and make this into a story size, everything jumps to uh, the bottom. Still 150 pixels from, from the bottom edge. The same if I go to this resolution back to square. Everything is kind of connected together as it should be. Okay. Now what I want to add is um, the tournament name. So I'm going to uh, press T to add a text element. And now we need a tournament name, so I'm just going to call this switchboard.ai classic, completely fabricated name. And I'm going to choose a new font for, uh, let's choose this extra bold one. Okay, this is good. Um, align this to the left. And I'm going to pin this to the right so that this name can stretch all the way over and I'm going to put some padding in 20 pixels on all sides and I'm also going to set the size um, of the font there. With fill text box what happens is that the text always tries to fill the size of the bounding box so that it will resize and reposition itself to fit the bounding box. If you don't want that to happen you can untick fill text box and just specify a font size. Now for the positioning or the vertical position of this, I kind of want this to be to be driven from uh, these elements at the bottom, like the player one or the player one flag position, so that again when we resize, go to a story size maybe, the information is still towards the bottom of the image. So top edge, I'm going to pin to let's say player one flag and we're going to pin to the top edge. And what I'm going to use here is a negative offset. Um, so what we have here is this element is pinned to this flag. It's actually pinned to the top edge of this flag. Um, but I've used a negative offset so that it pushes it further away from the top. Again, if we go to the, the resizer, it's still 100 pixels above the player one flag, uh, regardless of what size we use. So I'm going to change the color of this text just to match our guide. I want to have the color over here, so I'm just going to choose this real quick. This sort of yellow, that looks pretty good. Um, okay, that's good. So that's the tournament name element. Okay. I'm going to save this while I think to save it. Okay, the next thing I want to add is the city. So I'm going to duplicate this tournament name element, call this city. Uh, now the top I want to pin to the tournament name. Um, I'm just going to give this a, a normal offset of, say, 20. I want to make this a little smaller, so let's say to 45. And we'll put the city in as uh, New York. Make the color white. Okay, that's we need a little bit more room than 25, so let's say 30, something like that. That looks pretty good. Sort of consistent with what we are doing here with the with the city name. And I'm also going to duplicate this and use the same style as the year 
of the tournament, 2021. And I'm still pinning to the tournament name, but again, I need that um, negative offset to sort of push it above, um, push it above the tournament name. So maybe minus, I don't know, 60. It's a little trial and error, but that um, uh, gets that looking somewhat, somewhat similar. So go back to the canvas size chooser where you can pick from any of these sizes. Uh, everything is staying where it should be, uh, regardless of the template size, which is great. Two more elements to add. One uh, is the event, or actually the round of the tournament, and the other is the Instagram handle. So those appear in the bottom left and right hand corner. So I'm going to do those super quick. I'm just going to duplicate this uh, year element. I'm going to call this uh, round because this is the name and we can say uh, final because we can say this is the final of the of the tournament now um, I'm gonna put these right in the corner so um, I'm gonna to pin to the bottom edge and I'm going to reduce the size of the font considerably 20 that's a little too small 30 maybe like so so the pinning is um to the bottom left 10 pixels from the left edge and 10 pixels from the bottom edge just going to set the size of that duplicate this one uh put in here handle pin this to the right edge and this would be our instagram handle we can use uh us open just to keep the design consistent now this has gone green because down here my highlight color is set to green and highlighting where canvas uh, sees handles or hashtags in text it will use a highlight color so we can overwrite the highlight color here to be um, white I'm also going to write justify this text and this is 10 pixels from the bottom edge 10 pixels from the right edge. Let's save that. And we've got something um, pretty close to what the US Open has for their for their sports scores. They have a little bit more information on here. You would continue to fill this out if you wanted to, you know, this is a tie break set here with a tie break score. They've also got their seeding numbers for the tournament in brackets. That's a little bit beyond the scope of what I want to do with this template. I did notice something that was uh, that I did miss. And that's this um, sort of like graphic, uh, this graphic, which is these yellow dash lines. And I did find something similar, which I want to add. So diagonal lines here, if I pin this to the corner. It's appearing over the top of some of the text. So I can go to the element list, um, select these, uh, let's call them dashes and bring this down a little bit. Um, maybe just above the gradient like that or just below the gradient yeah something like that hide that save the template and we have a sports score template so now we have the template complete in canvas what I've done is come over to uh, another tool called insomnia which is a rest client and with a rest client like insomnia or postman is very similar what you can do is send requests to APIs and get responses and do different things so insomnia is the tool that I'm using to call the canvas API um, so this is a basic um, JSON request that I've set up all I've specified here is that the template uh, is tennis score that's the template that we just created in canvas and I want to create an image from that template 1080 by 1080 that's the resolution that we created it in anyway so this should look exactly like um, the image that we created in the template now I want to go back and the first thing I want to do is change the image so I'm going to come in to here and add an elements object here the element that I want to change uh, was called player image in that element I want to change the URL canvas will download an image that I specify here so I went on to Unsplash, found a picture of a tennis player, not very convincing, but still a pretty good image. Um, what I want to do is specify 
uh, switchboard.io slash players, what I called it. Let's send this behind the scenes that will download the image and uh, put it in the put it in the background there. Okay, so we've got a new image. Everything else is the same. Uh, what I want to do now is go in and change some of the some of the text elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is change player one's name. Replace the text in there to say a winner, and say player two's name. Change this text element here to be s loser. And now what I'm going to do is change the scores or the text uh, in those boxes that represent the scores. So the first one, first player, first set score, I'm going to replace text. Let's have this as six. And we'll do three of these. Player one, set two. Player one set three, and then the same for player two scores. Player two set one, player two set two, and player two set three. So six, six, seven. Let's just do two. Pretty convincing win. Five. Okay, so we send this again. The image will be downloaded for the background, and those text elements will be replaced with data from this uh, API request. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now the last thing I want to do is replace the flag images. Now there's a pretty cool site I'll show you here. It's this flagpedia.net. This will provide images um, of flags of different resolutions, a wavy flag, a straight flag, pretty flexible. And I've got an example here of the French flag. This URL is basically saying, a height of 240 pixels, an FR for, for France, this, this gives us the French flag. So we can use this URL in our request to replace um, the image used for the flag. So we can say player one flag, and the URL that you should use for that is the French flag. Obviously all this data and these URLs can be derived from data connected with the systems with, with uh, tools like um, Zapier. So let's just run that. Everything should be the same, but in this case, the flag image is being replaced with um, the French flag. Okay, so there we go. A winner, France, 626175. Pretty good, pretty convincing score. And I hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial. Um, I do want to do a subsequent video where I do actually connect this to a data source to show you how these images can be created at scale. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.